is a documentary that talks about the Middle East. Now we have Montserrat in the politics. Hello and welcome to this section about politics, a topic nobody really wants to talk about. Today we will talk about the politics in the Middle East. But before entering the news, first we need to establish how the politics in the Ottoman Empire are. The politics are consisted of a monarchy, but here instead of a king or a queen, a sultan is the one who has the higher range and who takes decisions. Now, entering the news, the sultan uh, Muhammad II sent to, he, to kill his brother Mustafa IV after he has been he was disposed. This will surely change the politics in the Ottoman Empire and the new sultan needs to keep an eye on his territories and the public speech of his people because this can greatly affect his empire. In this section we're going to talk about the economy in the Middle East. As we already know, the Ottoman Empire was already in a state of decay by the 17th century. This became, this became a huge problem by the 20th century when the empire fell. By the middle of the 19th century, the economy started expanding in terms of foreign trade. In a lot of areas of the Middle East, especially agriculture became one of the most important ways of commercializing with other countries. This obviously had consequences in the property or the rights of land owning. Other thing that I want to mention is that the standards of living of the people of the Middle East remained low in comparison to how Europe was, but at least economic growth was pretty big in comparison to how the Middle East was before to the after. Basically what I'm saying is that the world trade expanded a lot in some areas between the 19th and 20th century. The agriculture growth in the Middle East represent that the people started to trade and commercialize with other industrialized countries and especially in the case of Europe. A big comparison is the one that shows how the Middle East growed in the world commerce in the 19th century compared to the undeveloped countries. Okay, now we are going to explain two big problems that the Middle East had in the 19th century with Rodrigo and Dante, but first we are going with Rodrigo. Hi, Juan Carlos, I'm going to describe you the Greek independence that started in 1821 and finished it until 1829. It started with the brothers Alexander Ypsilantis and Dimitris Ypsilantis in 1822 in the theater of Epidaurus. So when the Ottoman Empire get knew about that, they allied with Egypt. So the Greeks got allied too with the United Kingdom, France, and Russia. Because they those countries got allied with the Greeks because they knew all the atrocities that the Ottoman Empire had done. So in 1829, the Ottoman Empire signed the, the Treaty of Adrianople, but and Greek got independent. So the United Kingdom made the London Protocol that the Greek cancel his constitution and got need and Greek Greek need the United Kingdom. Thank you for your attention. And we will get back to you, Carlos. Bye. Thanks, Rodrigo, for the explanation. Now we are going with Dante. In March 1811, Muhammad Ali invites a delegation of 60 Mahamuds to dinner in Cairo. As they leave, he has them all slaughtered in a narrow alley. In the aftermath, several hundred of those Mahamuds are killed and their property pillaged. They cease. Uh, to exist as competitors for the power. A little later that year, uh, to feign the alliance of Constantinople, 
Mohammed Ali sent a military force to Arabia to purge Mecca and Medina of a fundamental Islamic sect. The wannabes, which had taken over control of the holy cities around 1803, uh, had refused to allow the Ottoman Sultan's annual offerings to Mecca and Medina. The, the war dragged on for six years, but in 1817, Mohammed Ali forces were finally successful. For telling us the other problem, but now we are going with the conclusion of Hector. Hi, my name is Hector, and I'm going to talk about the overall elements of society, culture, and religion in the Middle East. The society in the Middle East was constant in battles because it's the richest region in the world. They have a lot of petrol, precious gems and exotic fabrics. Obviously the Crusades were in the Middle East. It always has been a place with a lot of trouble and wars. And Christianity was originated in Jerusalem, part of the Middle East, where Jesus Christ was born. In Bethlehem. And where Islam the Islam and Judaism were originated too in the Middle East. And they are the most powerful religions in the zone. And for the end, I want to add that the Middle East uh, had one of had two of the most powerful and largest empires ever. One of them is the Ottoman Empire that we already talked about it, and the other one is the Byzantine Empire that, uh, with the fall of itself, the Ottoman Empire started to gain power. Thanks. That's all.